keyboard video and mouse switches are devices used to change where your input devices are connected to. So system administrators use these devices to configure multiple systems at once using one uh, set of inputs. So instead of having a separate keyboard, a separate mouse, and a separate monitor for each set of servers or each uh, computer, you would just have one set of keyboard, one monitor, one mouse, one set of inputs, and then you'd use a KVM switch to switch to the different devices on your network. These types of switches also include security measures as like air gapping and anti-detection mechanisms. So basically, when you switch, if you have a good KVM switch and you switch from one device to the other, you actually have air gapped switches. So it'll physically disconnect the connection from one uh, device to another device. And this is very helpful because it prevents an attacker from taking over that KVM switch or a device that's uh, hooked up or your input devices and then accessing many different, um, many different devices with it. You can only access one device at a time. KVM switches also have tamper evidence usually, so they can't be tampered with or if they are tampered with, that can be uh, there's a seal of some sort that will be broken if the switch is altered or any settings are altered. This can also, this is similar to like a type of seal you might see uh, placed on a server rack. Sometimes you'd place a seal, like a metal seal, just a piece of metal that would have to be broken if you opened the server rack or unlocked it. So in this way you know that no one has unlocked that server rack <laughs> since the last time maintenance was conducted or a device was swapped out. Uh, those can be very useful tools to ensure that uh, d devices are not tampered with, basically. KVM switches can also uh, help prevent against monitoring taps. Now, monitoring tap is something you plug in. Say you have a USB input, you plug it into the tap and then the tap has another USB input to plug into the actual computer. So that tap will allow a, an attacker to read all of the traffic going through that USB line. And the tap itself might have a wireless transmitter to transmit that information to an attacker's device, okay? The use of this type of technology is, at first it requires an attacker to give physical access to your area. So if an attacker is able to use a wire, wireless tap like that, then they have the opportunity to perform much greater types of attacks, much more damaging types of attacks. So their use is pretty limited and rare. This is really kind of like spy stuff, you know, if you have these wireless taps because you have to have somebody in the organization or somebody who has access, physical access to the inputs to be able to use this, but they do exist. Uh, so this is more along the lines of maybe a malicious insider activity where somebody, maybe a disgruntled employee within the organization would place one of these wireless taps on a device. like, And they can be placed on any types of device. They can be placed on HDMI connections, USB connections, VGA connections. So you can have an HDMI connection plugged into one of these wireless transmitters and then you'd have the HDMI connection plugged in normally. The person using the monitor would just see the HD, would just see their monitor like normal, okay? But the attacker would be able to see that and see that monitor also. So it would be it's a device that's placed in line. We talked about seals, and also KVM devices or KVM switches don't store any information on their own, which is very important helps prevent uh, key logging you know, with these devices, with these types of wireless transmitters. So they just provide a physical switch that allows, so it's not a logical switch, it's a physical switch that will allow an administrator to configure multiple devices. Rather than having a logical switch that would store maybe the IP connections for each of the devices and then 
change the inputs based on logical settings. KVM sw uh, switches use physical air gap switches to do this. That's why they're so secure. When it comes to remote access, remote desktop protocol is a protocol used to gain access to a target computer. It's a Windows proprietary protocol. It's basically used for tech support. Uh, the idea here is that Windows created this protocol to allow its technicians to gain access to your computer to perform technical configurations or help their customers reconfigure their Windows devices. Now there's multiple scammers out there who basically build their whole careers over uh, tricking people into thinking that they're Microsoft tech support and then accessing their computer and changing configuration settings using RDP. RDP allows a graphical interface for the attacker. The attacker basically gets a window into the other uh, person's computer. I personally use RDP to help my dad configure his computer when he gets he has trouble with his tech support. So it can be very useful if used legitimately, but oftentimes it's uh, used by attackers. And hackers will use this connection because sometimes RDP is left open or misconfigured. Oftentimes it's not, it's not needed in most instances, particularly with a cloud service provider. So it should be disabled in most instances, but uh, many times it's left open. And because of the nature of the communication or the traffic that's sent over RDP, that can be legitimate, uh, attackers are able to exploit this open port and then perform malicious attacks. So RDP op operates at the transport layer of the OSI model, layer four, over port 3389. So it's, it, can be gain, it can be used to gain access to uh, a device and with virtual machines, it can be used to gain access to that virtual instance. Secure shell is a method of transporting data uh, securely. Okay, so SSH uh, sessions can, they're basically used for file transfer, but SSH works through a handshake process where you'll have two devices that will decide upon what channel, what communications channel to use, and then how uh, to encrypt the data itself. It can be used to secure traditional file transfer protocols uh, like file transfer protocol, FTP. And it's often used to log into remote machines or for remote login and with VPN. Some VPNs use Secure Shell. Secure Shell operates over uh, layer seven of the OSI model, the application layer and port 22. So remote access allows users to communicate uh, remotely or to access maybe a virtual desktop. So they might do so using a VPN that might be configured with Secure Shell. Uh, you wanna establish if you have remote access, say you're, as a, you're a CSP and you're operating virtual instances, virtual desktops, virtual operating systems for your customers, you wanna make sure that they can log into your services securely. So you might wanna establish a VPN uh, maybe with Secure Shell or some other type of VPN method, and then allow those users uh, an encrypted means of accessing your information. So it's very important to protect that data in motion. Mm -hmm.